Hi. First off, I want to welcome you to a beautiful and warm and sunny day here in Holland. Beautiful summer day. The temperature is one of the reasons why I'm dressed like Charlie Sheen in Two and a Half Men. Hey, just because I'm a pagan doesn't mean I uh, need to wear a wolf skin all year long. It's paganism. There are no rules, only human decency. I want to talk about Nehalenia today. Now, Nehalenia is a specific Dutch goddess of the North Sea. She governs sea travels. She helps with prosperity on your travels. She also governs the underworld. And she also is a kind of a fertility goddess. She's usually depicted as a maiden in traditional clothes. Well, let me specify that. It's in traditional Sealand clothes. Sealand is a province in Holland, for those who don't know. Uh, everybody in the world knows New Zealand, but nobody knows the old Zealand. That's a province in Holland. And what I mean by that is the old dress of the people in Zealand is they used to have like these things around their shoulders, draped. Two pieces of cloth around the shoulders and they had a little a leather band connecting those two. That's just what she usually wears. She usually has a bag of apples. So uh, you do now watch out, you have competition. And she's often depicted with one foot on a boat. Now, fun fact is, we didn't really know a lot about this goddess before 1970. Because in 1970, we made an archaeological discovery. And they found just like these big sacrifices somewhere in the ocean in Holland. And they were so big that they kind of had to rewrite history. Like, oh, wait a minute. Apparently, this goddess was a big deal. Um, and it was, because it was the custom that if you made a journey and it was successful, you would thank Nehalenia. And the way you would thank her is you would make an offering. Sometimes that could be a statue of her. And you would go to a place in the ocean and you would offer it in the ocean. If you look at the sea, at the North Sea in Holland, especially if you're in the sand dunes and you're a bit more high up, but regardless, you can always see there are differences in color in the sea. Some pieces are dark, some people pieces are light. There are certain pieces of the ocean where there's so much light that it's like a blue light that's coming through. People always said, that's the light of Nehalenia. So blue is her color. Now, I've been wanting to do a video on like local goddess, gods and goddesses for a long time. But those who know this channel, I don't like to just give you some facts and say, these are the facts in the video. I'd like to give you some facts and I'd like to add some experience of my own. So when I started to look a while back ago, like more than a year ago at some Dutch Germanic goddesses that were in my region. You know, I came at Baduhena, I came at Tamfana, I came at like, uh, of course, the Witte Wieve. Um, I'm forgetting one, Frau Holle. And I came Nehalenia. Now, I automatically like to name Nehalenia. I liked the way that rolled off my tongue, Nehalenia. So I just took that, that name and I just carried it in my heart for like a long time, for lots of months. Just Nehalenia. Just see if you can feel it. Like, what do I feel? After a while, it actually made me a bit light in the head and made me a bit emotional. And I, over the months, I've kind of come to understand this feeling that Nehalenia gives me. And, and, and 
so I can finally share some of my experiences with Nehalenia. Some people even say that the word Netherlands actually came from Nehalenia, so that we're actually named after the goddess of the sea. I can't guarantee this is true, but I so want this to be true. Well, first off, did you actually know that there's another tale, another folk tale, in which Nehalenia plays a role? I'll get to my opinion in the end, don't worry. Uh, I'll share you my experiences, but this is good stuff. Uh, I think most of you have heard about the tale of the Flying Dutchman. Now, this is not somebody who, who flew in an airplane. The story is that there was somebody who was the captain of a big Dutch ship. And he wanted to sail out to his destination. But the wind was really bad. So he couldn't sail out. But, you know, he just got mad. He said, you know, I'm going to sail out anyway. So he went to the bow, the front of his ship. And he stood there and he says, I don't care what weather you throw at me. I am going to sail and I'm going to reach my destination even if I have to sail for all eternity. And the ship left the harbor. And people never heard of that captain ever again. So people just assumed he was dead. After a couple of years, there's some reports of a ghost ship haunting the Dutch shores, very close to where he left. People believed that is the ship of what they now call the Flying Dutchman. Well, since this story is about a sea journey, when the captain shouts at the gods, I don't care what weather you throw, what god do you think? What god do you think he's there? Of course, it's Nehalenia. He defied Nehalenia. So Nehalenia is beautiful and can bring you many riches. But don't try to fuck with her. Please do. Now, onto my, uh, please do, please don't. It's a crazy slip up. <laughs> As for my experiences, like I kept her name in my heart for a long time. So I could kind of feel her energy. And yesterday I made my first sacrifice to her. I went to like this big river which just kind of goes to the River Rhine and the River Rhine just goes into the ocean. And um, I just put like this piece of, uh, the, like the skin of a tree, the bust. And I put like a light on it and I put some coins on it and I did some fertility things and I wanted to film it, but I didn't film it because I figured like it's kind of intimate and it was just for me. It made me feel really good. So normally you pray to Nehalenia, you know, for your voyages. But I didn't make a sacrifice for my voyage. Because I figured Nehalenia herself is on a voyage. She's been gone for so long. And only in 1970 did we realize that she was actually quite important. And I think only now with like the rise of paganism, Dutch paganism, Germanic paganism. She has a chance to reach hearts and minds again. <coughs> so I made that sacrifice, not for my journey. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> but more specifically, for her journey. And I know for a fact it's already working. Because I've been speaking with the Wisdom of Odin and he will do, he's in Holland at the moment, and he will do a Nehalenia video also. Meaning that video will reach a lot of people. And she will capture the hearts of some more people. And maybe there are some people who would like to like make an offering or just try to connect. I don't like this term which some people use in paganism to say like, I work with the gods. That's for me, like if you want to say that, that's okay. But for me, that feels disrespectful because they're gods. Like, I'm going to work with her. Like, hmm, hmm. You know, I just, I try to humbly connect if I may because they're gods, big and I'm small. So, 
prayed for her return, made sacrifice for her return, and uh, looks like it's already happening. So excited about that. But what I actually learned was I learned some things that I just couldn't figure out when I was younger. When I was younger, I lived very close to the sea. I was born and raised in the city of Den Haag in Holland, which is a city of about 600,000 people next to the North Sea. Now, I never understood the sea when I was younger. I never did. Like, what's it's like? It's like where water meets dirt. Like, what, what's so special? I didn't get it. Because there was just like, the Hague is just buildings everywhere. Building everywhere, building everywhere, building everywhere. And then there's the ocean, and it's like a wall of nothing. So I didn't feel it. I didn't get it. But having placed Nehalenia, uh, you know, that name close to me, I learned something about the sea because the sea always feels felt for me in the old when I was younger like a wall just boof and you can't you, you, it's the end but Nehalenia is about the sea journey when you see a wall what is that somebody say yeah it's a boundary we must turn back and maybe you should but sometimes it's also the call to adventure. And I believe that's what Nehalenia is about. It's Joseph Campbell's The Hero's Journey, The Call to Adventure. That's what Nehalenia was. And in that time when I was living in The Hague, I didn't really hear the call to adventure. I was more playing it safe all the time. So no reason I didn't like to see because I couldn't see the call to adventure. So. I really hope that some of you are watching this, especially those Dutch people and the people with Dutch blood. I mean, everybody's like free, but I think especially if you have the Dutch blood, maybe it's easier to connect. To like connect with her. Next thing, uh, next time I will go to the ocean, I will, I will do that. If you do, use the color blue. She likes blue. And I hope she will bring you prosperity. Like they, she brought the Dutch people prosperity. People seem to forget that the Dutch people were at one time most powerful nation and wealthy nation on earth. Look Holland up on a map. We are tiny. You know, the fact we were able to pull that off, you know. Maybe all those offerings to Nehalenia paid off. So I hope they will pay off for you too, my friends. Thank you for listening. I'll see you next week. Charlie Harper signing out.